My name is Edward Wilkinson. I'm Global Head of Indian, Himalayan and Southeast Asian here at Bonhams and I'm here to introduce part three of the Claude de Marteau collection. Claude de Marteau was an inspirational dealer and collector who started his career in the late 50s and was responsible for placing some of the most important Indian, Himalayan and Southeast Asian sculpture in museums around the world. So I'd like to first introduce the Varupa, this fabulous Mahasiddha, which is Claude's pride and joy. It's very special for the collection because it represented a connecting point between Claude and myself when we first met and were looking at the collection. When I held it in my hands, I looked at Claude and we didn't have to say any words. We both recognised how important, how fabulous it was. So the figure of Varupa is important and very popular in Tibet. And this posture that he is seated in recounts the story of him in a tavern. And the proprietors were concerned that he wasn't able to pay his bill. He was a wild looking character. And so he cut a deal with them that once the sun passed a certain section of the sky, he would then pay his bill, to which the proprietors agreed. He then pointed to the sun and stopped the sun dead in its tracks. But of course, it caused an incredible calamity and finally the king of the region came and settled his bill and they recognised him for who he was, an important spiritual teacher. This sculpture of Nana Tapa is very important because he's another one of these Mahasiddhas who was responsible for transferring the Buddhist teachings in North India up into Tibet. As far as we can tell, it is the only sculptural representation of this historic figure. And he's identified by a small jewel box that he holds in his left hand, the little lion sitting on top. This is an incredible sculpture in terms of how it conveys his wild ascetic with his wide open eyes and his hair tied in a top knot. But in addition to that, you have an incredible level of detail regarding the textile design of his lower garment, which reflects the very much favoured Chinese textiles that were being imported into Tibet at that time. So Drug Pagaltsen, also a Sakya master, he was the fifth Sakya Tritsen, a very important figure within the early tradition of Sakya practice, and he's very distinctive in the way in which he holds these primary attributes of the bell and ganta that tie him and his practice to Vajradhara, who's the principle of their tradition. But in addition to his incredible stature, are these wonderful long sleeves that represent his lay garments. He was not formally a lama. And so, again, a real display of opulence and wealth. His garments are beautifully incised with flowers and decorative motifs that reflect the current taste of the 15th century Ming courts. And particularly in this sculpture, it's inscribed on the top of the base, which is a very typical imperial Ming tradition, not a Tibetan one. This represents a small fraction of an incredible group of over 70 items that we're presenting. And I really encourage you to come and visit and experience these pieces in person and appreciate them just as much as Claude did.